Okay, everybody. I just thought I would share with you guys the uh, layout of the floor joists and everything and how it's going to be done. Um, originally, I was going to put concrete pillars like every 10 feet, you know, so there would be like um, 10 feet out and 10 feet up would be one and then another 10 feet would be one so there would be like you know two four six eight ten twelve there'd be twelve columns so instead I've decided to put one row of eight inch concrete columns straight down the center and then um, I've also decided to use uh, two by tens to frame the floor joists with um, if anybody is ever curious on uh, rough cut lumber strength and things like that, there's not really any good technical information on, on hardwood, rough cut lumber, but uh, I have found um, this book that you can just look at and download for free. Um, you know, there's the, the website it's a PDF and uh, this guy has built several houses out of green rough cut lumber so if anyone was was you know of the opinion that you could not build with green lumber that it had to be dried that's wrong and here's the proof um, so let's skip down there's pictures in it and layouts and all kinds of stuff but let's go ahead and Okay, here, here's just a, a small chart right here. Um, it, it only goes up to 2 by 8 but uh, a rough cut 2 by 8 spaced 16 inches on center should span 14 feet. So, and mine are going to span like 13 feet 8 inches to the, uh, to the middle support. So, you know, from, well, I can tell you real quick. So from there to there is, okay, 14 feet and 3 eighths of an inch. So a 2 by 8 would work, but I'm afraid that over the span of, you know, 20 years or something, it might get a little bouncy. Not that it would cave in, but that the floor would be bouncy. So I, I went ahead and decided to, uh, to use 2 by 10s just to, double down and make sure it's it's solid as a rock so up under here would be um, the concrete blocks this gray strip represents concrete blocks and I'll cut a notch with my angle grinder and a masonry disc in the concrete blocks to inset these 2 by 10s and then the uh, the sill plates will you know of course bolt down to the to the concrete blocks and then you'll stand two by tens up on end. Um, now on this first one, I'm doubling up the two by tens just to support the uh, the wall because this is right where the uh, the wall framing will be. And then space them 16 inches on center like that, and then overlap them in the middle by six inches on each side, so they're overlapped a foot, and both supported by this middle beam that's uh, two 2x10s two nailed together. And then at least every five feet, as the the book I just showed you says, at least every five feet there needs to be two by bridging. So I've got, you know, three rows of bridging and obviously this other side would be the same. I just did one side to save time. And then uh, my decking is just going to be one by sixes put in at a 45 degree angle to add strength. So you've got, you know, your two by tens running, you know, 16 feet this way. And then you've got two by cross bridging every five feet. And then you've got one by's nailed at a 45 degree angle across them all. So that should make a pretty strong floor. Um, 
Now, I don't know if you need to dig these pillars below the frost line to give them a good solid footing since it's going to be under the house and, you know, the crawl space under a house really should not freeze, especially not down, you know, inches into the dirt. But I'll go ahead and probably put them down 18 inches to the frost line just to just to make absolutely sure that it's not going to shift during the building process at least anyway. Because uh, it'll probably, you know, take a little while to cut this much lumber to do all of these things. You know, just think about, you know, cutting each one of these 16-foot 2x10s, you know. I'm usually only cutting 8-foot boards. So it would take quite, you know, I'd say probably between 10 to 12 minutes to cut each one of these um, two by tens and probably oh I'd say one tank of chainsaw gas would cut one and a half or maybe two if you're lucky but uh yeah it would probably do two but you'd have to stop after the first one and sharpen the chain up a little bit because that's quite a lot of material to go t go through 10 inches wide and 16 feet long and uh, also I've decided to to not make the the lumber a full two inches thick I decided to go an inch and three quarters thick which is still a quarter of an inch you know thicker than um, dimensional lumber from the lumber yard um, and the lum the white oak is stronger than you know pine or whatever anyway so um, but I'm gonna make it an inch and three quarters thick that way a regular three and a half inch framing nail will penetrate you know two two boards thick all the way so like when I'm nailing like these two boards together the nails will go all the way through both pieces maybe barely have the point stick out the other end but uh, and especially for these middle beams and everything I want these to be seated against each other just as flat as they can get but anyway, I thought I would just share with you the the what's what I'm gonna do here, the plan, so to speak. And then obviously, you know, toenail these ends so they don't move. And then nail the ends. But that should be pretty strong. So each one of these two by tens, now keep in mind they are solid white oak. So the actual gap that they're spanning is 13 foot 6 inches. So that's 6 inches less than what a, a 2 by 8 will safely span. So these 2 by 10s ought to make it super, super solid. But I guess that's it. I just thought I'd share this with you guys real quick and see what you guys thought of that. And then also I wanted to show you guys this this book that this guy wrote in, the, I think it was the late 70s. But uh, it's got all kinds of pictures in it and stuff. Um, you know, rough cut floors and and the, the rough cut walls, which is what I'll have. Uh, it's pretty neat. So if you guys thought that uh, you couldn't build with... Uh, green lumber that you just cut check out this book because he actually says in specific exact words in this book that he has cut a tree or no that he has built with a piece of lumber that was a standing live tree the day before so you can do it and I encourage you guys to check this book out for free you know it's just right there go look at it or download it or whatever you want and uh, yeah that's it.